Hello, how's it going everybody? This is Etho and welcome back. We're finally here again on the Hermitcraft server. And boy, it's been a bit of time, hasn't it? Oh, I'm sorry about that. You know, it's one of those things I wasn't really planning on taking a bunch of time off in January. And then I started playing Don't Starve Shipwreck. And man, I got so addicted to it, I just couldn't stop playing it. But you know what? I've also been thinking a lot about Hermitcraft. I've had big plans for our base here, and I think today... We're gonna get into that again. Now, as many of you know, I've been playing this game for quite a few years now, and I often get asked the question, Etho, how are you not bored of this game yet? What What's your secret? What have you been doing? <laughs> I found Sidekit, by the way. He's, uh, he's, he could use a rescuing. One of these days, I'll save him. Um, yeah, you know, whenever I try to build a base or do something in this game, I always try to change things up. Do it differently. I have my favorite build styles and, and block pellets and stuff, but, you know, if I don't try new things, I'm not going to learn new ones, right? So we've been experimenting a lot with our base building this season, but there's another thing we've been experimenting for the first time. Um, I've been making a big deal about this, our storage system. So we got the Googler, we've got our uh, enchanted book, like non-stackable item uh, storage system over here as well, where we can select what we want, hit the button, bam, and it's going to show up here. Uh, we also got our quick dispensing system over there for rockets, and we got a crafting thing with all the dyes, and we can get sand and glass and gravel and make concrete there, nice and easy. We also made a bit of a storage system in our enchanting room for our tools and armor, and there's even a display for how many items are in there. Then last episode, we finished up our ender chest storage systems as another piece of the puzzle. There was one left to do, and we did it at the start of this episode. So what is the final piece? Let's go down and check it out. I've always loved building storage rooms in this game, and I've always wanted to make the ultimate storage room, right? But then I realized, no, there's no such thing, because every time you go to your storage room, your goal is different. Do I want to pick up a stack of rockets? Do I want to drop off 10 shulker boxes of cobble? Do I want to auto sort something? You know, different storage rooms are going to have different strengths and weaknesses. So our goal this season was to experiment with breaking it down into different pieces. And each piece of our storage room does a certain function. So down here is going to be our bulk storage. When we get a whole bunch of something, we need somewhere to put it. It goes in these barrels. Now, you might have noticed our new bulk storage room is deep down underground. It's kind of like a vault. It's totally lit up. There's no chance of creeper spawning and blowing my stuff up. <laughs> but I got to admit, up until this point, I've been pretty nervous that, like, maybe someone will visit my base and a creeper is going to walk up behind them and bam, we lose all our stuff. All my wealth on the server could be gone in an instant here because most of it, if you didn't know, is stored in these two chests. Uh, also, we got a bunch of unsorted items in the Googler. The idea being, of course, when we want to sort our items, like let's say we think we have a shulker box full of andesite in there, we get a new shulker, an empty one, then we tell it to find andesite in our unsorted items in the Googler. Bam. We leave it alone for a bit, we go do something else in our base, and when we come back, hopefully we'll have a shulker box full of whatever we searched. And we pick it up, and uh, get a new one over there. Bam, like that. And we add it to our bulk storage. But now we're gonna move our bulk storage down below. Also, we also got a lot of stuff in here too. <laughs> There's some in there, you can see it's kind of run out of hand. I'm running out of space for you know, where to put this stuff, put some over here as well. Uh, I've been using my Wither Skeleton Farm a lot too, by the way. So here's my plan on how I think this is going to work. We're going to take our bulk storage, all our shulker boxes full of one item. We'll take one item out, like so. We'll mark the barrel with that item, and then we fill it up with the soul sand like this. That way we can easily see what's in the barrel just by looking at the block there. And if it's an item that you know, you can't place, like, it's not a block, then we we'll, might use item frames to mark what's what's over here. And then, like, if we need to pick that up, we'll break this, break the barrel, stand next to your shulker, and just quickly unload it like that.
Oh, snappers. All right, everybody. Well, we got it all unloaded down here. Way more stuff than I initially thought we had. Uh, we have already expanded once, as you can see, and it looks like we might need to expand again already. <laughs> now, most of this stuff is low value, like netherrack, stone. Uh, we just need somewhere to put it, though. But there are a few valuable things down here as well that uh, we got way too much of, and I should probably open a shop to sell. Uh, that stuff like I don't think many people want to buy gravel, but you know Dark oak. Yeah, people probably want to buy dark oak. Apparently. I got a lot of dark oak I didn't even know it couldn't see it before we got birch logs down here um, I think in total we unloaded like 200 chalker boxes, so <laughs> It's a bit of stuff and I don't have to go end rating for a very long time now because we got so many empty chalkers, which is great uh, so that's gonna save me a bit of time, but uh, anyways, I think we're about done with this project I got one thing left to show you with it though, you know, it's a simple storage room But I had to add at least one redstone gizmo to it. <laughs> so uh, We ride the water to get down here, right? We got the magma block. How do we get back up is the question. I can't swim up here We just hit the button And then it switches to soul sand and we just ride it up. It's hooked up to a hopper clock so after a certain amount of time it's going to switch back after we get to the top. Hey, you. That reminds me, I'm supposed to light up the, the lower area here. <laughs> oh, that scared me so bad. I had, uh, I had a, a scare there, for sure. Anyways, so it switches back to magma after a certain amount of time. And I guess I'll show you guys the redstone to this real quick as well, in case you're curious. So the water elevators above the magma block. Then we got a regular piston on the left and right side of that. That's what we use to switch between it and the soul sand, which is on the left side. We have four buttons in total above there, there, uh, there, and there. The redstone from that all merge together in the center here and go right to this piston first off. Also to our note block tune. I think the, t the tuning on this was 6, 8, 11, and 15, if I remember right. Then from our redstone, we branch off over here to a hopper clock. That's the timing we use to control when to switch back. It's got 12 items in there. Uh, redstone torch to a sticky piston with a target block on top. And then it goes to this piston and it switches back to the magma block. Look at this, everybody. We're in Accutown right now. This is right by the shopping district. It's a project Scar and B00 have been working on for a while here, and it's really starting to take shape. You know it's a Scar and B00 build when you hear stuff like that. Because you know they didn't light it up or fill it in. Yeah. <laughs> So, I had a bit of a dumb idea here. You know, Scar has been making these giant buildings, and a lot of them are still very empty on the inside. He's been working on it. He's, he's getting it done, but it's a big project, right? He's got like a 50s diner down here, which is pretty cool. I think he opened up a clothing store in that one. But again, he's got a lot of empty space to still fill up. And I thought we might try to help him out with that today. Uh-oh. Scar is logged on. He didn't see me. Okay, we're good. Oh man, okay, that was a little tougher than I expected. Scar was online pretty much the entire time I built that. Um, we're doing him a favor, don't, but don't tell him about it. Let's keep it a, a surprise, you know, a happy surprise that he hopefully never figures out because uh, I didn't ask for permission. Uh, but normally you go up the elevator here and it brings you up to his clothing store. He's selling netherite armor for 64 diamonds, I think. A little pricey. I don't think he actually wants to sell it. It's more of a decorative thing. But uh, I've added a little bit more onto the elevator. I'm hoping he never comes up here because <laughs> like... By muscle memory, you know, he might just get off at the second floor every time when he goes in that elevator and not even try to go any higher in it, right? So, but yeah, it takes us up to the third floor, which is now entirely Sneaky E's. So check this out. Welcome to Sneaky E's. Best prices in town. 
buy now before you miss your chance and then you can go up through the exit here all right so what are we actually selling this time around at sneaky ease well the whole top row and bottom row last time we only had three shulkers so yeah we've really expanded this time around so one diamond per stack for logs um we got two diamonds per stack for shroom lights and for wither skeleton skulls we get enough for a, a beacon there basically Blaze rods, you know, that's the first thing that sold out last time. So I thought, let's try it again. One diamond per stack and for honeycomb. Uh, jungle logs, one diamond. One diamond for everything in this aqua chest. It's kind of like an assortment of things. Then two diamonds per stack for these other types of logs. They're a little bit harder to get. So I want to charge a bit more, but I think it's still a good price. Six stacks of leaves for one diamond. Oak and spruce. And then two stacks of quartz for a diamond. We got three stacks of glass for a diamond. Three stacks of lily of the valley. That's great for white dye if people need it. And two stacks of red nether bricks for a diamond. We have like rock bottom prices here. One diamond per stack of coal blocks. Get tons of those for my wither skeleton farm. And three stacks of the mushroom blocks for a diamond. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll leave this store up here for a week or two. And, or until Scar tells us to get out. <laughs> One or the other is going to happen. Hopefully he doesn't find it. It should be like, it's pretty sneaky, right? I don't think he's going to be able to see it. Can't see it, can't see it. Oh no, you can see it from that close. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Can't see it, can't see it. Oh, it, it pops in right when you get around past this building. Interesting. Okay. I don't think people will notice it though. Let's pop into ICEs real quick here as well, because I noticed some stuff got sold out, like a whole bunch of stuff, which uh, is unusual. Uh, yeah, I saw this. Look at this. All the snow is sold. Anything else? Oh, yeah, we sold some packed ice and some regular ice there, too. And somebody uh, put stuff in the Canadian custom thing. This is a scam. <laughs> uh, once people put stuff in, they can't get it out. Ah, oh, this is a quick pork chop. Start it. It's supposed to be a joke, like you put something in here and then that goes over top and then you can't open the chest anymore. <laughs> uh huh. All right, how much is this actually? 44. Wow. And 60 and 67. Oh, wow. Apparently, uh, snow's really popular right now because even Azuma wants some. Pretty much went all season without selling too much, but now it's like all gone. <laughs> we got orders. We got to get to restocking. Uh, anyways, let's go check out Shady Ease here. If you guys haven't seen, B O, our apprentice, our employee, <laughs> has been busy. He's been doing good things, guys. He, uh, made some deliveries to Impulse, to Grian, to Corellis, and, yeah, um, I, I, I don't know how to explain this. I kind of feel how I imagine, like, a father would feel when his son wins a baseball game or something and he gets a trophy. I, I'm just so proud of B-dubs. Look at this, he got his first complaint. Anyways, the time is flying and we should get started on our main project for this episode. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be working on the base. We've got to fix the carpet I just punched. And uh, I think specifically we're going to be working more on this area, just kind of polishing things up, not really adding too much new stuff on here. But like this room is very unfinished at the moment, as you can see. <laughs> uh, starting off, I think we're going to work on the gate over here so i noticed like the left side it goes way up there and the right side goes way up there and then the gate is kind of like low in the middle and the shape of it is like this it's like an an end shape sort of thing and i feel like it should go straight across or u shape so it looks like it actually attaches to the walls and like they're actually supporting it so we're gonna try build that up a few blocks and that will help us on this side um we got to really clean this up. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a big mess. But kind of the top of the wall is up over there and the gate is like way lower at the moment. So that'll help connect that together to the wall there. Also, we changed the wall a few times, I think, as we were building it and it got fatter. And then I didn't know what to do at the top of it and kind of just made it go inward here. And then we got this tiny little thing over there <laughs> and it doesn't look quite right to me. So we, we got to like fatten that up at the top, I think. Probably we'll add a door frame here and then a staircase to get up to the, the room there, which at the moment we can't really get to. We have to fly there. And one more thing here as well. When we go up our gazebo and look to the left, this is what we see at the moment. <laughs> if we build up the gate to like there, 
that will help out a bit, but we'll still have this redstone visible, uh, even with the gate built up taller. So we'll have to put something decorative to hide that as well. Uh-huh, so that is our plan at the moment. I think it's a good plan. I think we're going to go ahead with it. Uh, unless you guys disagree, let me know now. Oh, I didn't hear anything. Okay, let's get to building. What is this? This is new. Be ready for the end. HCBBS. Insert name and be part of change. <gasps> I just remembered Beef is having a sale at his store. Look at this. He's got a brand new store and everything now. Hurry. First one in. What's he selling? He's selling guitars. We gotta buy a guitar. But I, get, I gotta get back to building. Alright everybody, well we got a lot of building done. It's it's finished. We did what we wanted to do. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye bye. No. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do it one of these days. One of these days. No, I'm gonna show you guys what we got done. Uh, so let's go check it out. From the gazebo, remember we saw that redstone before, and now we have a bit of a decorative garden there, you know. It's nice to have these little decorative spaces around the base. We got a few of them. Uh, it just helps to break things up and uh, add variety. I struggle with that a lot, actually, when I play this game. It's like whenever I have a space, I feel like I have to make the most use out of it possible. Like, function, function, function. Put a gizmo in there or something. <laughs> but it's like, no, we're playing Minecraft. We have infinite space. You just, just don't worry about it. Put something decorative there. It's fine. Uh, yeah, and now we beefed up the wall, the gate here. So we just added a little bit of extra wood at the top there, some fences, two of those, uh, whatever the emerald things are, I don't know. We've been putting them all around our base though, so it kind of suits the theme. And we got some etho banners as well. The, the big thing about the gate that kind of makes it special is the color scheme. It's yellow, and that's like the only real yellow thing here. And I didn't want to distract from that, so we used like neutral colors up there. It, it kind of just adds to it. It doesn't take away from it, you know? So that, I felt that was kind of important. Now, this room got a pretty big change. It's not done yet, but it's getting closer. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's the wacky room. There's all these different color palettes and stuff going on. I got rid of the orange up there and made it a bit more neutral as well because it, it felt like it stood out a bit, but then I put some orange there, so I don't know what I'm doing. Um... Yeah, we claimed that area up. I didn't really have a lot of space to do much there, and I decided to try put some pixel art. And it's it's me on the beach. You know, get my tan on. It, it's great. It's wonderful. And then we got a couple more paintings on the side there just to fill up space. And we're going to have like a, a bit of a spiral staircase to get up here. And then if we ever get to, around to making a downstairs, like this is how we get downstairs too. Um... But yeah, we go upstairs here, do a little spiral, and then we got, like, uh, a thing above us. <laughs> I think I might not extend it out over here. I kind of want to leave this open so that we can see this door. Get that nice and prominent. And if we did beef it up a bit so it doesn't look as awkward as before as well. Oh, yeah, and before we forget, I almost forgot. Let's go up here. I did, I did something weird with the rockets there. Uh, we also, I haven't forgot about the spitty stations. We're going to have a rail that runs across here and hopefully like we'll make an opening here and then 
Speedy's gonna come up an elevator or something to get over here probably. And look at this, we have a staircase now to get into the ender chest room. I think this is my favorite thing I built today. I love this color scheme. <laughs> I don't know, it's like... I feel like brick goes with so many things in the game now. I just love it. As long as you don't use too much of it, you just... You gotta use a little bit. Uh, and then it seems to be fine. So we got, like, the mushroom jungle, then we go brick, then we go leaves. So we go kind of red, green, and then blue. Uh, and it feels, you know, happy and cheery. I, I think it's pretty cool. We had to keep the melons here because you can see them on, like, through here. So just tried to blend them in. <laughs> Got another custom tree over here. A melon tree, of course. And fake clouds because why not? Sure. The one weird thing I noticed about this room is it really matters which direction you're going. Like, when you're going up the stairs, it almost feels claustrophobic or foreboding, you know? Like, oh, oh we're going up to see a boss or something up here. <laughs> But when you're going down, it's like, oh, it's so peaceful and nice and cozy, right? It's uh, two different feelings depending on which direction you're going. But I, I like going down the stairs a lot more. Uh-huh. But anyways, that was a pretty massive project. And I'm, I'm pooped out now, guys. I think that's all we're going to be doing for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, though. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And until the next episode, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.